Hello everyone, uh, for this video we're going to work with a pretty interesting data set. Uh, this was something that was released by the uh, US Department of Health and Human Services and um, it's pretty cool because it gives us an uh, interesting look into the cost of hospital charges for certain inpatient and outpatient uh, uh, services, uh, specifically as charged to Medicare. Uh, and they highlight a couple of examples here in this press release. Um, the, one of which here is um, they're talking about basically the cost of a joint replacement um, charge and uh, going from a low of about 5,300 at a hospital in Ada, Oklahoma to a high of 220, I'm sorry, 53, yeah, 5,300. These numbers are so different, it, it kind of blows me away, uh, to a high of uh, uh, $223,000 at a hospital in Monterey Park, California. So um, what we're going to work with today is actually a subset of this data, um, but if you want to check this out on your own at the bottom of the press release, uh, there's a really nice uh, link to um, the data itself and you'll see over here on the left you can grab the inpatient data or the outpatient data or both uh, in either uh, Microsoft uh, Excel format or in a CSV and when you download the data you'll get something like this. They've done a pretty good job of documenting um, the data, all the different uh, all, pretty much all the metadata about the data, what it represents, which which I think is, is really um, helpful. And they've basically broken it down across hospitals within the, the United States for these um, top 100 um, uh, diagnosis-related groups. Um, so again, the one that I'm going to focus on is uh, the joint replacement uh, group and uh, specifically just the data for California. So, you know, with any of these spreadsheets, if you want to use this in ArcGIS, you'll have to do a little cleanup, uh, and that's basically what I've had to do. Um, but you'll see that it's got some great fields here that you can um, geocode off of, right? So it's got the actual provider, street address, city, state, and zip. So once you query out the definition that you're principally interested in, um, you're pretty much off and ready to go. So I'm going to skip a couple of those steps, but um, I, I just want to be able to start walking you through um, how to use the local Moran's I um, statistic to identify um, some of these outliers and see if we can identify um, that that um, one location in question as pointed out in the press release. Um, so I've already pulled in my CSV file just to kind of show you what I did with the data. Um, coming out of Excel that's just a, a little bit cleaned up. Um, one thing that I did do with Excel was I, I went through and defined the column types. That's always uh, an important step. Um, and I, I renamed the columns as well. So you'll notice that the names of my columns are shorter. They're a little more cleaned up. Um, that just is going to save you some headaches. Uh, and the field that we really want is this field right here, which represents the average covered charges um, for that given procedure at that location. So it's the same thing as what's found here in the spreadsheet, right? All right, so now I've got my table loaded in. Remember, CSV files work really well. You can just add them like a, a data um, layer. Uh, and I'm not going to walk through the geocoding, but the next step would be to go to geocode addresses, uh, map to the appropriate address fields, and you're kind of off and running. And you'll get back something that looks like this, which is a shape file or feature class that represents all of those locations. Now you can see I've already sort of identified in the data set here this is the location that is pointed out in the press release. So right here when they're talking about high of uh, 223,000 at a hospital in Monterey Park um, I can grab that location pretty easily just by opening up my table and, you know, sorting the column based on the highest amount. And sure enough, there's the location of Monterey Park. Um, okay, so great. So now I had sort of the benefit of the press release, obviously, to identify those, but what other hospitals around might also be similar to that? And do I notice that charge being um, or that average being statistically uh, different from, from, say, the other ones around. 
uh, that that hospital location. And so this is where the local Moran's eye it, it comes in handy because it's it's going to basically look for outliers and clusters, right? So um, we may find patterns where there's just a lot of high um, charges for procedures across the board um, because uh, I don't know that it's it's located in in a, uh, a much more expensive place. I don't know something like that. Um, uh, but but um, we we want to really identify those on the map and, and see where we can uh, see those pop out. So um, using your search window here, you can um, look for the local, local Moran's Eye tool. You're going to find two. Um, one that does the cluster and outlier analysis um, with some additional rendering. Um, I'm just going to run just the basic script here. So I select this guy. And what I love about all these tools is that they do a good job of really explaining sort of what it is that you're going to get and what it means. Um, so without getting into that here, I'm first going to go and select my geocoded locations. And I want to pick that field that represents that average covered payment, right? So I select that here. That's going to be my um, the, the field to be evaluated. The next step here is I have to place the feature class somewhere. So I might as well just put it in my LA geodatabase, right? So I'll call this my, let's just call it local Morans. And Okay, so I get the results back. I've got now a layer here that's representing um, the um, statistics results. Um, hospitals that are in dark gray here are not significant according to the statistic. Um, anything that's uh, black is a high, high cluster, so it's it's high and it's also surrounded by other high hospitals. Um, high low is an outlier, and that's really what I'm interested in. And if I look at this guy right here, this should be the one that was identified in the press release. Yep, there he is, 223,000. And if I want to explore a little further, I can zoom in here, maybe into the LA area, make these guys stand out a little bit on their own. And then, uh, you know, I don't know, just real quickly, maybe I'll just go ahead and label everything. So I'll choose, whoops, that's what was happening. Let me label my geocoding result because that's where the attributes still are. And let me just make sure it's picking the right field here. Yep, it is. All right, so there we go. So it gets a little messy here, but you can see here's our 223,000 surrounded by 80,000, 78,000, 79,000. 133 over here, 141, 43, 98. So it's really interesting to see uh, sort of the differences. Um, and if I want to make this a little fancier, maybe for a presentation, I can go add one of the nice base maps. OK, and now I have my base map on there. So pretty much from here, you know, you're, you're good to go as far as analyzing the data and and uh, working with it a little bit further. There is some interesting other uh, stuff that you'll find if you work with just the California data. Um, you'll see sort of a low, low cluster down around San Diego and a high, high cluster around San Francisco. Um, but, you know, have fun exploring the data. There's lots of good stuff in here. Um, and it would even be fun to, you know, compare different states um, as, as they did in the press release.